I'm Jocelyn. Hi, Jocelyn. Jonathan Brownlee. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Okay, so tell us a little about yourself. Well, um, my name is Jonathan Brownlee. I'm a director and producer uh, based here in Dallas. I'm, I'm a Canadian transplant, so I've lived all over the world and made films and television programs all over the world. Wow. All right, so we're here to talk about Three Days in August. Can you tell us a little about the film? Sure. Well, Three Days in August is uh, is a film about, um, actually based on um, some true life events. And it's uh, really based on a, a Texas artist um, who, she's a painter, and she really wants to paint a portrait of her entire family. She's actually adopted. So she wants to paint a portrait of both her adopted parents and her birth parents. But they don't exactly get along. So, unbeknownst to either of these families, she rents a ranch in Texas and invites them both there without telling each other. So, over the course of three days in August, um, you know, they get to know each other a little bit better and, you know, you can imagine the, the drama yeah. conflict that ensues. Definitely. I think everybody with the family can definitely see the tension of that piling up. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So, what made you want to do this story? Well, uh, it's a good question. Actually, this film really chose me in, in a lot of ways. Um, my very good friend, Shannon Kincaid, um, who the, the story is uh, you know, inspired by, she came to me with this amazing idea to make an independent film about, you know, specifically about you know, adoptive experiences and those ideas of feeling of abandonment and trying to find out where you're from and sort of picture all those things. And, and I knew how, I know how hard it is to make an independent film and because they're always considered small and will anybody ever see this film? Will it get out there? Will it get festivals? Will it ever get a release anywhere? So she was really open to the opportunity of me trying to create a larger package around this. So um, the Dallas International Film Festival had never had a screenwriting competition. So I said, why don't we do this in partnership? We'll fund the screenwriting competition. And a guy named David Kiger came in and wrote the check for that. And we'll let you put your name on it. That way you've got a screenwriting competition. So we put that out through Without a Box. And we got 200 submissions from 26 countries around the world. Um, ultimately chose a script that was written by two Dallas guys. Amazing script. Chad Berry and David Langlinay. And they really didn't have a lot of time to put 90 pages together, so we all sat down for a month and really reworked and got to the core of this. So I'm like, that's great. We know we have a festival release, fabulous. But I also reached out to my connections at Studio Movie Grill, and I said, you guys are big supporters of independent film. What if you guarantee us a theatrical release? And of course, you think of the ask there, right? We don't have a script, all right? Uh, and they were like, we'd love to do this. So now we've got Diff and Studio Movie Grill, which gives us a guaranteed theatrical release. So I reach out to my friend Jeff Berlin, who's a Sony artisan. And he's like, this is a great idea. Let's get Sony behind it. So Sony came to us and they said, would you be willing to shoot a camera that's never had a theatrical release? I'm like, let's talk about it. So they came in and provided all the cameras. Leica came in and gave us $200,000 in lenses. Um, Sackler and O'Connor came in, light panels, all these amazing people just started saying yes to this. Um, Lucky Post here in, in Dallas jumped on board and provided editors and support and it just continues to roll over in this amazing sort of community event. Wow. Okay, so you're just basically saying that everything that happened, it doesn't really normally happen on a film-to-film -film basis. This was just something that just came in and... and yeah, I wanted to create kind of a workflow, a business opportunity. You have to create a good artistic opportunity, but you know, this is a business. It's show business, yeah. not show friends, mm -hmm. not show play, mm -hmm. not show fun, right? So it is a business, and ultimately you want to help your investors recoup their investment. You also want to tell a good story. So I wanted to provide a package that did both of those, and again, Shannon Kincaid and her whole family have been amazing. They they you know entrusted me to do this and, and, and get it done, and here we are. Awesome, okay. Alright, so um, as far as Shannon Kincaid, like, has she seen the finished project? No, so the project's actually not finished yet. Okay. We're still in mix. Um, actually, uh, my cinematographer, uh, uh, Mangani Malambo, mm -hmm. who shot the film, he's in Toronto right now picking up the color files. Kind of a strange story, I was in Mexico and I met a guy that owned a color house mm -hmm. in Toronto, which is my hometown. And he was asking me about the film. He goes, we'd love to color the film. Now, you have to understand, Alter Ego just finished a little film called Mad Max, all right? Mm -hmm. Which just won six Academy Awards. I'm like, this is really nice, Greg, but I'm never going to be able to afford you. I mean, they, it's $120,000, $200,000. He goes, we'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? <laughs> so they really did this for almost free for us. Um, so color files are coming back. Right now, Johnny Marshall is busy mixing away. And so our DCP will come out on the, the 14th. 
which was a couple of days before we have to show it on the 19th, but no pressure. Yeah, not, not at all. <laughs> okay, so as far as the movie goes, what do you want your audience to take away from this? That's a good question. Um, so I really would like the audience to take away from this, you know, how, you know, how fragile relationships are. And also to understand a little bit about what adopted people go through, um, whether they're kids or orphans, but what they sort of carry with them into adulthood. It was really important. You know, uh, Shannon really enlightened me a lot on, you know, some of the struggles that she goes through. Um, not the least of which is just trying to find out who you are, where your place in the universe is, trying to find oneself, and always that feeling of, you know, you've been given away once. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody give you away again, and there's all those things that that kind of happen. So uh, that was, those are really the core, the core issues that we wanted to get get out here. Okay, so how has that perspective kind of changed how you've been since you've been able to work on? this project? You know, it really, um, I know that I know a lot of adopted people, um, but I never really discussed, uh, you know, how they felt or those types of things. So it really has uh, enlightened me into the situation of, you know, what adopted people go through and continue to go through. And as you know, some people go out in search of their their birth parents. Sometimes birth parents come to find you. But just that, that whole understanding of why didn't they want me? Mm-hmm. Right? Okay, so last one. So how would yeah. you compare, um, since they're both talking about adoption stories, how would you compare your main character with that of Batman? Oh, interesting question. Yeah, that's true. Another, you know, that's a pretty decent character, right? Batman yeah. is an adopt, right? Yeah. Adopt kid. Um, you know, I think Batman has similar issues. You know, he's got the always that fear uh, of abandonment, the fear of being pushed away. Um, feels like a loner and an outsider. Does he really know his place in the world? And I think our our main character Shannon also, you know, continues to work through this. It's not, there's no finite end to this. It's constantly a process. Well, thank you so much for being on that nerd show. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me.